All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Revolution Fighting Championship here in World of Mixed Martial Arts 5. We are $6,500 in the hole, but I believe we should be doing okay coming up here after this. We do have, uh, it seems as though in just one event, one small event has uh, gotten some people uh, kind of over. Uh, let me see here, like like a guy like him. Oh, that's right. I didn't put pictures to these faces. I said I was going to do that, and then I didn't. Man, I've been falling behind on everything. I can't, I can't tell you how far behind I've fallen on all of that. I wonder if there's uh, spare pictures. There's got to be, like, placeholder pictures. I actually don't know if there's placeholder pictures. There usually is, and it doesn't feel like there is. I don't know. There's a copy of that. Oh. I feel I feel bad because I said I was going to do it, and then there's no... I don't think there's a way to... I don't think there's anything in here. There's not even like a gen... Like a general thing. Maybe I should use a guy who's like not who's not gonna be in here for like twenty years. I just get like Sage Northcutt's picture and just be like, yeah, that's who this guy is. This is Bruce the Spaceman Baker, which actually that that wouldn't that would that would make some sort of sense with the way he looks. Uh. I gotta, I gotta find that, but yeah, we did sign Tito Ortiz, but yeah, the guys fighting in one, like, ended up uh, getting some decent name value already, so uh, they're demanding, that I think they'd be demanding a little bit more per fight, but at least at this point, um, I signed them up for a bunch of fights that they aren't going to, uh, they aren't going to be leaving right away. So we got Revolution 2 booked already, we won't really worry about Revolution 3 just yet. Uh, so we'll go ahead and there we go. As a wrestling fan, I hadn't even noticed who, who was it? Uh, in a way, oh my God, who was it that came up? Uh, Tony Halme. That's what it was. Tony Halme. I didn't even know because someone had mentioned to me in the comments that that's uh, uh, oh god who was it Ludwig Borga I'm pretty sure yeah he's he's Ludwig Borga and I was like oh shit okay that's cool this must have been maybe what he did after after wrestling let me see here. New Japan, 93, 93 to 94. Catch Wrestling Associates until 97. And then he did some stuff in UFC. So, yeah. I was like, oh, cool. Ludwig Borga. Maybe I can do something with him. Probably not, but we, we can try. We're just kind of getting through the uh, the paces here. I didn't realize we were already on week two. Man, I wasn't even hardly paying attention. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. We were probably on, like, Friday or Saturday uh, week one. My bad. Either way, the weigh-ins have happened. Looks like everything's going to happen as is. <sighs> what is this, nine fights? Looks like nine fights. All right, what do we got here? Main event. Let me turn this down just a hair in my headphones. So there we go. Main event, Laverne Clark. One and one. He is a hometown hero. Or at least hometown boy. I don't know so much about hero, but I think that's what they call it. Like hometown hero. But he's from Iowa taking on Wayne Cuthill, who won his first MMA fight in the Revolution uh, at Revolution 1. Uh, let me see here. There you go. All seven of them going for Clark, though. Cuddell's got a weight advantage, but uh, they both make their Revolution debuts. I thought Cuddell was not that. I thought he fought for me. Hmm. 
Okay, well, making his debut then. Uh, the Rodan and Carlos Newton. Oh yeah, that's right. This is the the fucking the Weeb Fighter, because he he runs like f- Dragon Ball Jitsu or something. I gotta I gotta make a star out of the Ronan Carlos Newton. That's amazing. Evanovich though, uh, Clinton Evanovich did I think pretty well in his first fight, and uh, he's got a weight advantage, six inch reach. But uh, they're thinking that Newton's gonna pull away with this, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Bullet Donald Como versus Lawrence Morris. Uh, doesn't say what they had. I can't quite remember what what each other had. But uh, either way, five guys going for Como. Garner Keith, the Titan Rand Award. So I'm kind of skipping over most of this here, except for you know like Tito Ortiz. This is uh, his pro debut. Everyone assuming that he will beat Bruce the Spaceman Baker. In his Revolution FC debut, David Hood versus Neil Barnes. Brada Ray Cooper versus Zachary Hellhound White. Everyone kind of going for Cooper on this one. The Fighting Farmer, Royce Alger. Seems to have a lot of people uh, uh, thinking that he will beat Scott Baker. Uh, This is his pro debut, too. And then uh, I believe this is uh, Herring's debut. I'm not sure. I think he might have had some fights. He did have one fight beforehand. I don't think it was with us. No, he did have one fight. This will be his second official fight. The Texas Crazy Horse Heath Herring, 19 years old, taking on Dave Men, who I think is fresh off of uh, being released from UFC. But they are putting uh, money on the 19-year-old Heath Herring. Speaking of which, that match is now. Kurt Funk. Big size difference. Oh, yeah. Heath Herring. Heath Herring, 6'4", 275 versus men at 5'10", 192. Herring just seems to be uh, a little takedown attempt by Herring. He's got it. The half guard, see what he's got. Sweeping can't do anything. Herring's still getting in on him here. Doesn't seem like they're doing a whole lot. I think they're probably going to get stood up here. Eh. Oh, never mind. Herring firing away at strikes. And that's it already. Jesus, 10-9 to Heath Herring as we go to the second round. Fighters engaging. Left jab, left cross. Men's going to have to try to win this round if he wants to even try to get to the third one. Sentry to center, Herring, uh uh-oh, Herring's already starting to tire out a little bit, not quite, uh, not quite up to, uh, to to snuff with, uh, stamina right now. Let's see if that helps men, it looks like, perhaps, it it, it kind of is. But, uh, Herring's still connecting with a lot of, uh, with a lot of blows here. Uh, it's going to be very close. They might they might give this one to men. We might have to go to a third round. Let's see what we got. Herring ahead 2018. Let's see what they got. All three judges 2018, and they're going to give it to Heath Herring after two rounds. There you go. Looks like men maybe could have pulled that one out, but, uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Heath Herring pulled out more jabs. And uh, overall, definitely, wow, he, he had that ground and pound a going. And Heath Herring wins his Revolution debut. Gives a name check to people at American Kickboxing Academy. He has a lot of respect for Dave Men and praises his toughness. There you go. So the fighting farmer, Royce Alger versus Scott Baker. I'm imagining at, at some point that these uh, these other these other guys, these like faceless guys that I brought in to like fill out the uh, the, uh, the 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 roster are eventually kind of gonna go away. Uh oh, because <laughs> they're they're already poor, and then we're and then we're bringing in like you know guys who are skilled when they come in and debut, so. All right, hooking a jab. Let's see here. Baker seems to be doing Alger. Alger coming back. 
man. Come on. You can't you can't lose to a faceless guy, Baker. Come on. Uh oh, giving the wound a look. Nope, we're back on our way. Alright. Alger Alger's Alger's doing a lot better now, it seems. Alright, gauging the center. Looks like we're gonna be coming into the end of the round. There you go. 10-9 to Baker. Alger's gonna have to work with this here a little bit. Gonna have to get something going here. It's kind of weird how both these guys, you got a wrestler and, well, okay, the kickboxer, to be fair, yeah. If the, the wrestler should probably try to take him to the ground a little bit, I don't see him being able to uh, outstrike him. Alger is very tired, wrestles Baker up against it. Come on. Dirty boxing, trying to keep him up against him there. Oh my god, he's he's breathing heavy. He's he's okay, he seems to be using a lot of the dirty boxing here. Just to uh keep keep himself in this. Well, oh, they got him out of there. Oh my god. Alger might be able to take this one on points and make it to a uh, to round three. Baker, but only a 10-9. Oh no, let's see. Is it 2018? 1919, 2018 Baker and a 2018 Baker. And Scott Baker winning a by majority decision. Alger, what are you doing, buddy? Wow. You know, when you kind of look at the breakdown of the fight, I think it's the power that won him on that one. The other one is like, I don't know what to say. I feel like Alger definitely had him in the second round, and uh, the stats definitely seem to back up the uh, the idea that that uh, that that was true. But alas, I, I I'm not able to uh, to uh, just let that let that be a thing. Uh, give me one second here. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of looking at something. All right. I guess we will get this going. Baker gives the name check to everyone at Wanmot B. JJ referencing his scoring. In any case, he's perplexed about not getting a unanimous decision. I'm perplexed that we didn't get a third round. I have no idea what happened there. I feel like he hit some power shots, but overall, you know. I feel like Alligator definitely controlled a good portion of that that round. Well, we're already we're already showcasing disrespect here. Then connect the left jab. Let's see way past the going guard. Going forward, right cross. Come on. I mean, everyone assumed Ray Cooper was going to win this here. They seem to be doing a lot of striking between each other. All right, they're still they're still going pretty back and forth right now. There's not really any, no one taking a distinct advantage right now. Uh, well, it looks like Cooper might be getting some uh, some uh, uh, counter strikes in here. That was the right hand. Left hook, man's a right hook. Oh my god! All right, Cooper got a ten nine. White seems to be a little bit exhausted already. He seems to be very tired. Yeah, he's very tired. Pulled into a clinch, and it looks like Cooper's now just going to uh, dirty box his way to victory here. Cooper is just seems to be smothering him. Oh, take a sharp stomp to the foot, knee strike just above the hip. There you go. Too much grappling against the ropes as they are uh, going once again. But it looks like Ray Cooper is definitely going to come away with this one right now. Unless something happens. Missed the right jab. Nope. White is just exhausted. Can't seem to be able to get something going here. Oh, they're both tired now. <laughs> Let's see, throwing elbow from the clinch. More dirty boxing while pressed up against the ropes. Just finishing the clock there. 
2018 to Cooper. Let's see if they say that as well. All three judges, 2018, given the unanimous, unanimous decision to Ray Cooper in two rounds. Uh, it seemed like that was uh, that was something that he was going to have to do. And once again, just like the previous fight with Alger, he controlled a good portion of the, uh, the round with the uh, clinch and dirty boxing. And in that case, won the round. So I'm still perplexed. But there's a lot of average fights going on here. Ray Cooper thanking everyone at his team. He has a lot of respect for Zachary White and praises his toughness. All right, let's get this going here. David Hood versus Neil Barnes. I think I care slightly less about some of these guys that don't have, like, faces to them. Because it's like, eventually, I'm going to have guys who have portraits. And I don't have to worry so much. So that'll that'll be that'll be nicer. <laughs> Especially because I can't, I can't find any like generic photos to potentially use. At least not right this second. Hood cutting in the eye. Okay. Takedown attempt. Hood getting dragged around. Jesus. Neil Barnes is looking to to take him on this one. Barnes is attempting the mount. Tries to fight it. Doesn't happen. Hood, Hood coming back at him though while he's while he's bleeding on him. Barnes, they say ten nine potentially. Here we go, round two. Hood with the jab, Barnes with the one two. And there, find a way, sharp one two. Barnes, Barnes started doing pretty well. He seems to be very tired though. Hopefully he can just uh, he could just. Uh, Work with it. Oh, it looks like Hood's starting to get starting to get tired too. Let's see. Both both guys are exhausted getting into a clinch. <laughs> Jesus. Hood's breathing hard. Barnes is Oh, there you go. Well Barnes got him again. <laughs> oh no, they're both out of gas. Come on. Hopefully, oh, Barnes, nope, Kimura, he got the Kimura, nope, never mind, Oh, I thought we were going to get a nice submission, but nope, doesn't happen, still pounding away at him, that should be it though, 2018 to Barnes, let's see if they make that decision too, all of them 2018, gotta go to Neil Barnes, getting the win on that one, there you go, couple of nice takedowns there, Especially on the ground, firing away at David Hood. Wasn't enough for Hood early on in the first round. Or late in the first round, really. Neil Barnes, though, uh, thanking everyone on his team. And uh, celebrates his Revolution debut victory. He says he's already looking forward to the next fight. Speaking of uh, debuts, it is the pro debut of the Huntington Beach bad boy. Tito Ortiz, let's go. Just rushing on in there. Dude, if Ortiz loses, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> let's see what happens. Baker pressed up against the ropes. Okay, not much happening right now. All right, Baker's already starting to breathe heavy. We're like four minutes. Okay, yeah, there's only like a minute left, but yeah. Let's see, Ortiz with the slam, Jesus. Oh my God. Can he sweep it? Nope, there you go. 10-9, definitely in favor of Ortiz. Let's get this going. Let's see, Will wanting to grapple. Let's see if he, uh, he's... He's, they're they're really emphasizing the fact that he's willing to take some shots to uh, get up in there against him. So we'll see we'll see what happens. There's not a lot of progress happening right now. I don't know I don't know what to say. Uh, then it looks like Tito Ortiz is definitely going to be walking away with this one because he is just uh, what's the word? Wrestle fucking him. <laughs> Just having his way with him in the in the uh, in the wrestling. That should be it. Twenty eighteen for Tito Ortiz. Let's see if that's officially what it is. 
All three judges, 2018, after two rounds, and Tito Ortiz in his pro MMA debut here in May 1997, walking away the winner. There you go. Name checks all his opponents. He celebrates winning his debut fight for Revolution. Here we go. Garner Keith and the Titan Randall Ward. So we got this is this is this would be interesting because these are two big dudes six five two seventy five six seven two seventy six and it's jujitsu and wrestling so it's gonna be it's just gonna be two big dudes just wrestling around on the mat with one another holy crap Let's see what we got here I'm kind of pulling for Randall Ward just because he's already two and oh I'm 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 pulling for him to. Hopefully do pretty okay. Both guys seem to be... Uh, well, let's see here. Yeah, they both seem to be doing... Uh-oh, big strike. Uh-oh, Ward seems to be hitting, getting it bad. Oh, there you go. He finally got it. Garner Keith taking him down. That was like one big strike, another big strike, and then the Titan Randall Ward goes down. Garner Keith getting the win. Three and one officially now. Just some big punches being thrown. It just seemed like they just went right into each other and just started punching. And eventually one of them hit a little harder than the other. <laughs> Name checks all his sponsors and his fans. He's a good talker. Really does well in these sorts of interviews. I didn't even think about it, but I just keep tilting my head to the left. And I don't like that. I'm going to like sit up straight and have the microphone like in front of me. So I have to like kind of keep my head straight and upright rather than just kind of like moving it awkwardly touching gloves here bullet donald combo one and one lawrence morris is two and oh so i'm kind of hoping that you know we can at least have kind of a bit of a streak going muay thai versus kickboxing should be should be interesting we'll see what happens i'm expecting maybe some sort of tko to happen here you know, both guys are both guys are big strike guys, so let's see what happens here. Morris, it looks like Morris is already like he's already like gassing out though. Like within three within two minutes he's been gassing out. A regular Bob Sap over here. You know, the you know, the other bigger dudes didn't get this gassed out. I mean Donald Como is six two, two eighty one. That is a beef of a dude. You're only 242, and you're just just gasping for air. I don't know what to think. Oh, Como able to take him down, though, so that'll definitely help on the scorecards. Just as it got, just as it was getting interesting. Fantastic. All right, right cross block, left jab, not able to make anything happen. I'm also trying to look at something else. There we go. Kamo's very, very tired. Oh my god, come on. Well, Kamo trying to get that trying to get those takedowns. It does, it seems like that might be the thing here. To uh give him the win is being able to take him down and move him around a little bit. Let's see, get into a better position. Let's see if he can get into it. Final 60 seconds of the round. Waist lock, take him down. Nope. Not able to make it happen there. I think Como might have gotten it 2018 on that one. Let's see. We got all three judges 2018 for Bullet Donald Como. Or Kumo. And uh, I think the takedowns really helped out, and the jabs, uh, the strikes on the ground helped out with that one, and he'll go to two and one. Name checked, everyone. He's very comfortable. Here we go. The Ronin, Carlos Newton, and Clinton Rabbit Animal, Evanovich. Dragon Ball Jiu-Jitsu. Let's see how well Dragon Ball Jiu-Jitsu works. Hoping it's going to be good, because he's only 5'9", 200, compared to 6'3", 256. Takedown already. Oh, my God, that's it. That is it. Call for the bell. It is over. 
Just as soon as I'm looking to the side, I look back over, and he is slapped on an arm triangle in 46 seconds. And Carlos Newton, with the arm triangle, has already beaten Klevin Ivanovic, and his 3-0 and record is gone. Carlos Newton is going to go up to 1-1. One and one. Jesus. Just as soon as I like look over, it's like, and here we go. And takedown. And submission. He taps. It's over. Jesus. That was a squash. That was, yeah. If this was wrestling, this would get booed. This would almost get booed because of how hard I wanted him to like win. Just because of some of the just because of some of this stuff. I was like, man, it'd be great if if Evanovich can put him over. Look at that. He's three and oh. He's got a lot of hype and then just boom, forty six seconds. It would almost be cliched if this were wrestling. Name checks all of his spawns. He's very happy to have won his Revolution debut. And uh, he's very happy here. Very nice. And here we go. Main event, Laverne Clark, 1-1 one one from Davenport. Taking on Wayne Cuthill, 1-0. Oh. Did that happen here? Or nope. Okay, so this is his Revolution debut as well. All right. Sorry, I'm just rubbing my eye real quick. We'll see what happens with Laverne Clark. Everyone assuming he's going to win this. Uh, he is at a size disadvantage, mostly with the weight. But, of course, as we saw with the, with the Newton fight, doesn't really mean too much. So we'll see what happens. Jab it's home from Clark. Move around. Cuddle's got an opening. Uh, Cut Hill's still putting a lot of putting a lot of stuff in here. Let's see. Nope. Clark Clark seems to be uh, keeping him on the defensive here. Yeah, Clark Clark laying in a lot of shots here. So this is uh, this is looking good for Laverne Clark. That's what we need. We need uh, we need a hometown. We need to send the fans home happy, Laverne. So go ahead and win this for the hometown crowd. <laughs> Final 60 seconds of the round. As we're getting it to the end of the round here, we'll see what happens. Time expires. Clark took that round. Maybe just a little bit. 10-9. We'll see what happens. All right. Cut, Cut Hill is just dying. That's good. That means Clark can step in and start uh, taking him down. Oh, oh, can't get the takedown on Clark. That's good. Using his wrestling abilities, though, not able to make it happen. Let's see if he can do it. Oh, he got him this time. Firing off a few punches. Triangle choke. He got the triangle choke in. Wow, Laverne Clark. The submissions are out tonight as Laverne Clark gets taken down by Cut Hill, the freestyle wrestler. Who is training at a jujitsu, a jujitsu team? It ends up getting submitted with the triangle. Average fight. It seemed like we did okay for this. Not a lot of great fights though. But gives a name check to everyone in Next Generation MMA and his various sponsors. Celebrates his win and his debut. Commercial rating twenty. Uh, we are low level regional, so it is a little bit below. Uh, what we should have, but that's okay. Uh, it could have it could have been worse, you know. We got four forty one hundred dollars from sixty nine people. I gotta I gotta do the math on this one. How much money did people just pay in gate? Let's see, four zero nine nine divided by sixty nine people. That is fifty nine forty a person. What are we charging for tickets, people? I know, I know. In the old versions of like TEW, you could change the ticket prices, and I think they took them out for 2016. I'm kind of wondering if you can still do that. I'll take slightly more people coming in if it means you know, uh, uh, like I'll take I'll take slightly less money per ticket if it means getting more more people in the door. A lot of good and average. Uh, fights, but either way, uh, critical rating is a 67, so that's a success because it's at least a 60. So it went up. Uh, oh, our popularity decreased. Oh, what the hell? Oh, it must have been the commercial rating. Well, 
Could have been, could have been a little bit better. Laverne and Clark getting the submission. Oh my god, I kind of want to give it to Newton instead, though. Man, I'm sorry, Laverne. Carlos Newton's got to get that one for how easily and quickly he slapped on that submission. Or if he gets submission, then he's getting fight of the night. Barnes and Hood. Uh, you know what? Barnes and Hood was considered the only great one, so. We'll do that, and then of course there's pretty much only one actual TK house, so I'll uh, I'll give it to that. There we go. Yep, we'll leave with those awards. We managed to make three thousand dollars, which is still not going to take us out of the uh, out of the hole, but that's fine. It's as I assumed. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Evanovich has left after completing all his contracted fights. Did I only sign him for like two? I thought I gave him more. Eh. Bat Milicic got booked. Renzo Gracie booked. Matt Hume booked. Matt Anderson booked. All right. We didn't sign Milicic, did we? I don't think so, because he was just too much. Here we go. All right. So Clinton Evanovich left. That's fine. He's worth like a. Oh yeah, that's right. He signed to UFC. That's right. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't get him to stay. Yeah, that's basically what's going to happen there. All the way at the bottom is our show. Everyone else's contract are considered more like more effective. <laughs> like oh yeah, there. I guess there was a show. There's only like five companies, but I guess there was a show. Uh, let me see here. I don't think there's anyone I'm going to really be able to like. Uh, 20 days, 11, 19, 1. I'm trying to see if there's anything. You know what? I'm just going to let them uh, get. I'm just going to let them get signed or not. And then I'll pick up the pieces. <laughs> so let me let me get to like Saturday, I guess. Oh, there we go. Mm. All right, so active fighter, male, let's go like 30, based in America, uh, name value anywhere, max at like uh, an unknown, I guess. Let's do like low level regional. That's about it. Oh, we got a lot of guys this time. All right. We, we got some guys coming around. Oh, I should probably change it to people to hire. So, like, unemployed. That's less people now. All right. So, let's see. Brennan Kamaka. No one signed him to anything, so maybe we can get him some fights here. We'll give him, like, four, four years, ten fights. There you go. Perfect. We'll get some. We'll get some guys brought in here that can potentially do some uh, do some good. Hmm. Let's see. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. J.R. Palmer might not be too bad. Number two lightweight in the world. Eleven and zero. He bring at least a little bit of name value. Wouldn't be bad. 3-0-3 oh, for John Lewis. Other than that, doesn't seem to be much of anything. I don't know. I always felt like we need, like, one name guy, but I'd like to try to get out of, like, uh, of debt first. That's my thing. I still got a, a minus three. I'm still 3,000 in the hole, so... It could be a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead, advance it to there, a week and a day, and then I'm going to see where a lot of my guys are at. Work towards building a card for maybe July, but most likely August. 
There we go. All right. So we'll see who might have just shown up. And if there's anyone who might have just shown up. Uh, oh, shit. Dan Henderson. I think I could do. I think I can swing that if no one's trying to grab. I'm sure someone's going to end up grabbing him. It's it's going to happen. But I can always try. Ooh, the freak Tony. Fre I would guess Freakland. He's an unknown, but we can make him somebody. That's what we've been doing. Make him an offer. I mean, we got it. We got to try for Dan Henderson at least. I mean, that's we got to. So that'll be one of our that'll be one of our big that'll be one of our big big guys right here. So get it up to like thirteen. I think is usually what I want to do. No one's offered him anything yet, but I'm sure what's going to happen is UFC is going to come knocking and I'm just going to hate life. Brennan Kamaka signs. All right. Grappling unlimited team. All right. So I guess I'll wait until the two decisions are uh, potentially finalized. Until I look to uh, figure out what what's going to happen there. They only need like five weeks to prepare for a fight anyway. Some of them need like six or seven. Sakuraba got booked. That's fine. Must have been this one. Uh, Rickson Gracie battling Dan Severn. Oh, wow. Yeah, that'd, that'd, be, uh, that'd be pretty hype. And then Sakuraba's facing Wes Gassaway. Hmm. I don't know how I, I the, the, like Rickson Gracie and Dan Severn just sounds like a fucking fight. That's what that sounds like. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we can get Dan Henderson. Come on, Dan Henderson, Tony Freakland. All right, cool. All right, so let's see where we are at. Ooh, Renzo Gracie still hasn't been picked up by anybody. I mean, I'd consider it, but for twenty eight hundred dollars, uh, he'd give us he'd give us a little bit, like high level regional. He's he's pretty high up there. It's just I you know, can't afford no twenty eight hundred dollars. So that's one of our big stars right there is Dan Henderson. I'm I'm interested in seeing what we can make happen here. So we should we should start the matchmaking and see what we can ha make happen here. So let's just move to like week three July and see what we got. All right, there's like four guys. I, I want to see. I want to see. Still four guys. All right, let me just move to August. See who's not ready. Okay. Um. I'm thinking I'm thinking end of July then. So we'll do we'll do uh let me see what week two looks like. Alright, there's less people. So week three seems like it's gonna be the sweet spot for that. There's like four guys unavailable, but we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, we got plenty. We got more than enough. Uh, I guess we could just do like medium local. I'm gonna raise it just a little bit to like four thousand a month. Get that medium local. See if people show up a little bit more here, since we got some names this time. All right, number to four, Revolution Three. Who should debut? I mean, we know who should debut. Who should main event? I feel like it should be Laverne Clark again facing somebody. I don't know if Heath Herring is the guy I want to have him face right away, though. That's the that's the thing. Let's see. Bruce Baker. Uh, ooh, okay. Well, that's a pre he's a preliminary card guy, so. I want guys who could potentially main event. Ooh. Ooh, 
Damn. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that fight right now. Maybe I'll maybe I'll try to keep certain guys away from each other until we get to uh, until we get to that point where uh, where they uh, uh, where we're fighting for a title. That's what I was gonna say. All right, so Donald Camo might be the best possible option right now. Uh. Let's see here. Uh, Laverne and Pat Bonantello. That wouldn't be too bad. He's a preliminary card guy is the only thing. Ray Cooper wouldn't be too bad either. Hmm. I could do Scott Baker. But I feel like we could probably do something a little bit different there. Ugh. See, I'm not sure. I think I think for right now, building up certain guys is kind of what I want to do. So we'll give him we'll give him somebody. Yeah, I don't want it to be like a complete annihilation. I want it to be close. Mm. I guess I could have Bruce Baker try. Bruce Baker versus... I mean, it seems like he'd be the favorite going in. We can see what happens. Against Laverne Clark. This Bruce Baker guy, we might have to assign a, uh, a face to if he could beat him. Uh, Dan Henderson's got to... He's got to have some sort of fight. I don't know who he could potentially face. The answer is virtually nobody. Uh, that's about the closest so far. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are we going to do this now? Is this how we're really going to be doing stuff right now? Ah. Uh... All right, fuck it. I think that should be I think that should be the main event too right there. Dan Henderson versus Tito Ortiz. These two have had to have faced each other, right? That that feels like I don't know. Then again, I don't I don't remember what uh I don't remember exactly. I think he might have been in a different uh weight class. That's my feeling. Just trying to see if there's uh there's gotta be there's gotta be some something against Ortiz, right? Let's just control F for Ortiz. Uh nothing. Well there's there's a few matches, but it doesn't seem like anything Yeah, this doesn't help out. <laughs> but it doesn't look like he ever faced him in his uh in his career. So there you go, something something a little bit different. All right, Dan Henderson versus Tito Ortiz. Then let's we'll see what happens. Heath Herring's gonna want to fight, and by that I mean he's gonna. I'm gonna give him a fight. Uh, Ray Cooper might be a good idea. Uh, Tony Freakland. Uh, you know what? I'll give it to, I'll give it Ray Cooper. There you go. Heath Herring and Ray Cooper fighting one another there. I'm trying to, I'm trying to give some of these guys, here we go. Hallmate could probably take on one of these, one of these faceless guys and beat him, right? Let me see here. Wow, he's, he's not a good fighter. I'll be honest. He's 0 and 3, and I'm starting to see why he's 0 and 3. There we go. That's actually a really that's actually a really close fight between them. And he's on a losing streak, so someone's gonna be continuing their losing streak. 
There you go. Tony Home, Zachary White. <laughs> Gotta give Carlos Newton a fight. Uh, can face Garner Keith. That's a fairly close fight. I think that'd probably be the best one. There you go. Did they fight already or not? Have anything? No, these two have never fought before. All right. The homie wife's never fought. I, I want to make sure I'm not, like, doubling up on some fights here. It doesn't look like I am. So that's solid. All right. Um, this guy seemed like he was pretty skilled. Like, if we give him somebody, it might work out. Cody Keith... Uh, actually, this one against, uh, all right, both these guys, neither one of these guys have actually fought, so we can maybe have them fight each other. <laughs> that could work out. I'm going to put Newton up here, because I think he's got at least a little bit of name value to him now, <laughs> compared to Halme. Let's see, Zachary White, yeah. And then, yeah, low-level regional, but he's still doing okay. All right, so we got six fights going on here. Let's add just a couple more. We need something for this guy's first fight. Actually, the Egan Inoue one might be the best one for right now. Add that one. And then see if there's anyone I might be missing. We can give something to uh, Kamska here. There's got to be someone I could have him help beat a little bit. Ooh. I want it to be relatively cl close, though. Scott Baker. Scott Baker seems to be the guy. He is the man here. So we'll give we'll give Baker, and he can open, which I'm sure, it, which is definitely not main eventing. But you know what? That's okay. <laughs> And I think those are the eight fights. Uh, I don't know if I want to give some of these other guys fights right now. I mean, I could I could give these guys the ability to, to fight. Like, Matthew Burton could probably use one. He only had his one fight right now. This is a guy who's only had one fight thus far at Revolution 1. Seems like a decently uh, close fight between them. Let's see here. Actually, this one's... This one's... There you go. That's basically preliminary. <laughs> but they're both potentially main eventing. <laughs> there you go. All right. I think we are solid. And I think we'll just go ahead and start doing Mondays here. Oh, man. Sorry, I gotta stretch out a little bit. When is this happening? Saturday, week three. So we are just over five weeks away. I'll move to Saturdays like I usually do. Yeah, that's right, Pat Militich and Frank Shamrock. Uh, yeah, I'll just see how that how, real quickly how they do. Yeah, Matt Anderson won his fight. Cool. It's good to know. Uh, Hume won his fight. Renzo Gracie and Frank Shamrock. Shamrock beat Gracie. It was a poor fight. Oh, wow. And then Militic definitely beat. Yep. Unanimous decision. Interesting. All right. And anything, anything doesn't look like it. A uh, large local show still for Anderson. Yeah, a lot of guys that I wouldn't mind using if it wasn't for the fact that I just... Uh, like Renzo Gracie Frank Shamrock doesn't seem like it'd be that bad of a fight. Uh, it's just happening on some piddly little, like, just piddly little local show because why not? There's nothing there's nothing better right now. 
There we go. And let's go to next Saturday. Just keep this keep this rolling. We're a month away from uh, the next pay per view. Kevin Randleman. I wish I could get. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Training. Okay. Tito Ortiz. Uh, no. Tito Ortiz left. Ah, damn it. Well, he's gone. And just like that, Tito Ortiz is gone. Did he have a fight? Is this going to be his last? Is this going to be his last fight? Oh, yep. Dan Henderson. You know what? I care less now about the fact that I potentially have Henderson beating him. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I'm not big enough to get these guys exclusively. I don't think they'll sign exclusively. I don't know. I don't know uh, how big UFC technically is. Low level national. Yeah, I bet you you'd have to be at least a national to be able to sign people to uh, to uh, specific things like that, which is probably why it's only really UFC and pride taking people. I was hoping they had enough goddamn people, but nope. They can just they the we'll just be the we'll just be the feeder system for UFC. How about we just do that? That's how I'll, that's how I'll do things. <clears throat> Pancras Tough Love, is that is that what they name this? Tough Love, interesting. Uh, let's take here. Yeah, I do want to. I do want to potentially get through this because we're not we're not that far away now. So we can get through two events, and then we can and then I can call it good after like an hour or so. And then there you go. UFC 16. Sakuraba gets his extension, as I assumed. Yeah, there was no way I was going to be able to go up against Pride anyway. Like, if Pride won Sakuraba, Pride will get Sakuraba. <laughs> All right. Thank you for rubbing it in my face, game. Mark Coleman. Uh, yeah, UFC is going to keep him on. Royler Gracie's on the market. Contract status for Couture. I'm sure he'll be, uh, he'll stay where he's at. Yeah, UFC's going to keep him. Uh, see if there's anyone cut maybe from UFC. That'd be, that'd be the best option. See if uh, anyone's currently there that would be worth anything not so much uh Edson in no way might not be too bad we can go ahead and grab him he's cheap there you go was he with somebody no employment details okay so he just kind of showed up one day <laughs> it might have been from the beginning of the month honestly All right, cool. <clears throat> so let us get. Let us get here. Actually, I do want to change just a little bit. There you go. I'll do like 33, but I don't think there's anyone that's going to be worth it. I got a no way, which is fine. Yeah, everyone else is like, eh. <clears throat> I want decently young guys. Not like, it doesn't have to be huge, but decently young. I should see if uh, I can get anybody. Literally anybody. Nobody. Nobody wants to put me on their network or pay per view provider. Or anything. No one, no one wants to talk to me. It looks like I should probably at least be like mid-level region. I don't even see. Jesus Christ, I don't even see like. Oh, there we go. High-level regional. Yeah, everything seems to want like 
high level stuff. I'll get there eventually. Let me see here. Thanks, stay hydrated, bot. <laughs> Just checking to see where I'm at with that. All right, that's cool. All right, weigh ins, everyone made weight successfully. I don't know why I even like try to like look at that. Like, hey, everyone made weight. It's like, oh yeah, it's literally set from like the lowest to the highest. Everyone should be able to make weight. Are you between 90 and 600 pounds? Perfect. You made it. Revolution 3, which is uh, a never before done ma fight, I guess. I see, it feels weird because I feel like Dan Henderson would have fought him at some point, but I guess he didn't. Dan Henderson versus Tito Ortiz is going to main event this as you get to that one, Henderson, a it looks like a, a decent favorite over Ortiz. It is also his uh, debut. Ortiz will be leaving Revolution after this to go to the UFC. So then we get to that. Laverne Clark versus Bruce Baker. A lot of people going for Baker over Clark, so we'll see what happens uh, with that one. Texas Crazy Horse Heath Herring versus up Barada Ray Cooper. That uh, looks like they got Heath Herring going up over Cooper on this one. 7 0. Everyone going for him there. The Ronin Carlos Newton versus Garner Keith. Most people going for Newton on this one, uh, despite the uh, weight and reach disadvantage. Let me see this. Like 5 9. He fights middleweight and he's uh, 6 5 and fights heavyweight. Jesus, he's a big boy. Uh, then we got Tony Halme versus Zachary Hellhound White. This is about the best we can give Mr. Ludwig Borga. And still only a couple of people believe that uh, he's even going to do anything about it. It's weird that the randomly generated people of poor quality are still better than him. It's kind of sad. Headhunter Paul Buen Buentello versus Carl Malenko. Okay, uh, Carl Malenko. <laughs> I can do that one. And uh, it looks like uh, very even, slight bit for uh, Malenko, but uh, nonetheless. Uh, oh, they are both teammates too. They both they both train for the same team. Nice. The freak Tony Freakland versus Egan Inoue. Uh, it looks like most people are going for Inoue here in Freakland's uh, debut. The Warrior, Brennan Kamaka, and Scott Baker. Very close between them. Kamaka has a five-inch reach advantage. And this is Revolution debut, but Baker has a weight advantage. And then Matthew Burton and challenger Taylor Huey. Very uh, uh, close between the two of them. And that'll be the first one that we have. This is basically <laughs> two guys that are, like, okay. Like, they don't, they don't get to have faces. They're just randomly generated dudes. I'm just, uh, I'm just letting that. This is, you know what I'm gonna do. Oh wait, never mind. This might be already done. <laughs> Hang on, this might already be done. Oh my god. Well, that's it. Well, quickly enough. I was trying to make this just like an opening, just a, just a, a neat little <laughs> dark fight, I guess. Even though it's on the event, just like an opening, opening fight that lasted 54 whole seconds, and Matthew Burton takes the win. He's now three and zero. Quickly enough, all right, to the fights that I... Uh, here we go. He named a local club, invited everyone to his post-show winner's party. It was a very charismatic performance from him. The Warrior, Brennan Kamaka, and Scott Baker. A lot of people, it, it's very close, mostly it seems, uh, perhaps for Baker, but uh, Kamaka could win here in his Revolution debut. See what happens here. Maybe this will go a little bit. Maybe this won't go nearly as fast. <laughs> uh, right hand off balance. Let's see. Huge reach advantage. Yeah, we still have that, that big reach advantage going on here. He's also got 20 pounds on him, which is uh, pretty big in fighting. 
Final 60 seconds. It seems very back and forth. Kamaka, though, uh, seems to be doing a little bit better, I'd say. He probably got the got the uh, the, the win of that round, yeah. Kamaka getting 10-9 as we move on. Slipping past the right hook. Takedown attack from Baker and is able to do it. Let's see what happens here. Kamaka in an arm bar. No, doesn't take the arm bar. And tries to do it again, and he, no, he refuses to tap out. Oh, he loses the hold. Oh, my God, he lost the submission. Kamaka still, he's going to have to fight his way out of this. I think, uh, I think yeah, standing up now, but, yeah, I think, uh, I think we might have to go to a third round with this unless he can knock him out here immediately. Let's see, muscle up Baker against the ropes, not able to make him have to do anything. But yeah, I think that was 1919. I think we have to go to a, a final round here. All both of them 1919. So unanimous draw means we have a third round. Let's do this. Trying the right hook, but misses. I like that format, by the way. That is a that is a fun format to think about. Where it's like, all right, after two rounds, we can decide it there. But if it's not close enough at that point, we're gonna take a third round. I feel like that should almost, that should, I don't know why people don't do that. I'm sure there's companies that do that, but, eh. Uh, let's see here. It looks like Kamaka might have this one. Let's see here. He's going to have to maybe shoot for another takedown, I guess. But, uh, you know, looking, looking tired here. A lot of back and forth. Come on. Kamaka trying to muscle up Baker. Not able to make it happen. Oh, got him in the takedown. Oh, no, right at the end of the round. I think Kamaka might have just barely gotten this one out. 29-28, the warrior, Brennan Kamaka, in a unanimous decision. It was sort of cl it was, it was pretty close there, especially towards the end. Who knows what would have happened if another minute or so was on the clock. But nonetheless, Brennan Kamaka uh, taking the win. And uh, he, he thanks everyone at his uh, at his team and uh, celebrates his debut fight. All right, the to the freak Tony Freakland versus Egan Inoue. John McCarthy, Big John McCarthy, the referee for this. Let's see what we got here. Of course, with the jab, just a couple of just uh, exchange of jabs here. Let's see, left jab coming cleanly. It's going to be very close between them. I mean, in no way is supposed to be the uh, slightly better, slightly uh, more. Eh, seems like he's kind of got him on the run a little bit. Well, no, never mind. Tries to tries to make something happen. There's under a minute left in the round already. Shooting for a takedown, not able to get anything though. Now nah, trying again. This time he got it. Right at the end of the right at the end of the round. It's always right at the end of the round. But Freakland uh, seems like he had more of the uh, more of it there. So Noah is definitely gonna have to win this this round here. And there you go. I was just gonna say he should shoot for a takedown earlier, and immediately does it. And he seems to be doing a lot of ground and pound here. And Kimura twists that pain for an angle. No, pops free of it. Damn, he's trying. Trying, uh, firing off some punches. Still, still getting him in here. Stalemate, but I think Inoue definitely, definitely has the, uh, the advantage here. And he might have won this round. We might have to go to a third round after this one. It's one, two, looking ragged, and there you go. I think Inoue might have gotten that one. Let's see, 1919, is that where we're going to score this? 1919, 2018, Freakland. Oh, wow. Oh, majority draw. Okay, because it is a majority draw, they're going to go. Only one person kind of gave it to Freakland there, so I think Inoue is going to have to definitely win this round. To even get a, uh, a a majority decision at this point, 
Uh, can't hit a right cross. Doesn't connect. Uh, both these guys are just... They're so tired. Halfway point. Coming together to strike. No, not able to make anything happen. Shooting in. Not able to make anything happen. Someone's got to make something happen here. There's the takedown. Wow. This might be enough for an OA. See if he uh, does anything here. Oh. Doesn't do much damage. Uh, there you go. The fight's over. Let's see what happened. Oh, they said Freakland might have gotten this one. And Tony Freakland by unanimous decision. It was a 29 28, 29 28, and 20 and 30 27. In no way, not able to make it happen as the freak, Tony Franklin, defeating Egan and OA by unanimous decision. Decent. I feel like that sounded like it was uh, pretty A OK. Nonetheless, uh, name checks everyone at his, uh, at his uh, American Kickboxing Academy. He is delighted. And he's glad to win his first fight. Says this is just the start. And here we go. The headhunter, Paul Boonen, Buentello, and Carl Malenko. Let's see how we do with this one. Big size difference. 5'11", 2'12", versus 6'2", 265. So you see here, Buentello seems to be uh, kind of getting the uh, the better of him. Now oh, Malenko coming back in. So it's just a, just a little bit. Oh, cut already. Jesus, someone was cut. I didn't even see who it was that was cut, technically. <laughs> but Boontello already, uh, already a little bit, uh, a little bit weary. Uh, Boontello showing. Uh oh, I think Malenko might be able to uh, to to get him. Get him. He might have a little bit more left in the tank. Fight restarted. Thirty seconds. Round one expires. Boo and Tello getting the 10 9 round. Let's see what we got here. Nice jab and a cross. Shooting in for a takedown. Nothing doing on that one. Attempts a leg sweep. No, still nothing. Both of them. Oh, there we go. Malenko got it, though, this time. Now an arm bar. Nope. Blocks the arm bar. Malenko, you know, going to have to do himself uh, pretty good. Oh, he's got him in the mount. Anything? Yep, there he goes, pounding away on him. Gives up his back. Now he's trying to rear naked choke. Doesn't make it happen. Oh, Malenko tried another rear naked choke. Oh, my God, he's too exhausted now. This might happen. He might be able to lock it in, though. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh, man, Malenko definitely had that one, though. So 1919 is what it sounds like. And we're going to go to a third round. Here we go. Deciding round going in. Let's see if Malenko can do something about it now. Here's a takedown. Got him. See if he's going to try to submit him again. He seems to be wrestling arm triangle. Nope. Not able to make anything happen there. Let's see. Oh, he's got the mount on him again, and he starts pounding away on him. Gives up his back. With just a minute left, he can't do anything because Malenko is all over him. Can't get the can't get the choke going, but that definitely goes to Malenko, and it looks like he's going to get the unanimous decision. 29-28 decision, Karl Malenko over the headhunter, Paul Buentello. Very good starting win for Karl Malenko. Thanks everyone at his uh, at his camp. He is happy to win his debut. Says there'll be many more victories to come. Tony Home versus Zachary Hellhound White. Something that should be pretty decent for the guys who actually have pictures. But then again, Zachary White's been uh, I guess this is about the weakest guy we could put up against him. This is how Tony Home, the original CM Punk. <laughs> we'll see if Hame can actually gather up a win, though. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know if that could happen. <laughs> He's trying, but I don't think it's going to happen. Toe-to-toe -to -toe with strikes. Doesn't go anywhere. Starting to slow down a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> oh, no. Hame's busted open. 
with a minute left here. And engaging in the center. Still can't hit anything. Zach White still definitely got him on that one. <laughs> this is the weakest guy I could put up against you, Halme. I'm trying. This is what I get. You know, I try and try, and this is what happens. Let's see here. Throw, oh, what happened here? I was looking at something. Oh. Homie slams him down. Okay, you might have something here. Might have something. Gets into the mount. Let's see what he's got. Oh, no. Smothers him. Let's see if he can do something about it. Got the dirty boxing going. He's got a slam on him. All right, might might be able to get the majority of the round here. Let's see what he's got. No progress here. Halme's breathing deep, and that is going to be it. Halme getting this one. So the way it's looking is we're looking at 1919. See what we got? Both all three of them's 1919. Here we go, round three. Oh, buddy, here we go. Let's see, controlling the grapple with White. Halme slams him down. Oh, my God. Tony Halme might be able to pull this one off. Could be Halm. You never know with Finland. Could be like Halm or Halme. I should just call him Ludwig Borga <laughs> since that's what he is. See if he can do it. Gets lifted, partially swept. We're in the final minute of the round. Let's see if he can do something about it. Oh, uh, let's see. He's pressing up against him. He's got the dirty boxing. Let's see if that's it. They're saying 10, what, 10 9 to White. Let's see. 29 28. Oh, Ludwig Borga wins. Ludwig Borga takes a win, finally, in MMA. He goes up to 1 and 3. Wow. He announces he's decided to retire from active competition. Oh, he ends it on a win. Well, my salute to Ludwig Borga and his uh, illustrious career that he's had. Is that his only fight he had with us? Wow. Well, there you go. Maybe that's what CM Punk is waiting for. He's waiting for that big win to... Uh, to, to end his MMA career on. He just ends up going like 0 and 18. <laughs> Finally gets a win against some can. Like, now nah, I'm done. I gotta win. Maybe hey, that's what he was waiting for. <laughs> he got the decision. All right. Carlos Newton and Garner Keith. Let's see what happens on this one. Looking for Mr. Dragon Ball Jiu Jitsu to do well here. But then again, 5 9 200. 65275, but this is what happened last time as Carlos Newton took an immediate advantage. Oh my god, he takes him down. He might try it again. This might this Dragon Ball Jiu-Jitsu might work. Oh my god, attempting the sweep. Oh my god, he might be able to make it happen again. He makes it happen again! Carlos Newton does it again! 328 this time. Oh my god. Carlos Newton. That Dragon Ball Jiu Jitsu is something, man. Holy crap. The man has spent a total of like four minutes in the in the ring. Jesus. These takedowns from the Ronin Carlos Newton. Holy crap. Alright, I'll I'll take that. There you go, a leg lock, a submission, and this one is over. And Carlos Newton is on a roll. Thanks to sponsors and all his fans, and that is it. <laughs> Jesus. Texas Crazy Horse, Heath Herring, and Brada Ray Cooper. See here, Heath Herring's done uh, pretty well for himself here. He's uh, 2-0, 1-0 in, e in uh, Evolution. Brada Ray Cooper, 2-0, both of them in Evolution. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Is he is the slight underdog compared to Herring. He's uh, definitely he's given up over a hundred pounds to Heath Herring. I should probably start putting some uh, weight classes in here. That's probably what I'm gonna do here. And like uh, once we hit, once we get through like maybe a couple more of these, 
and sign on more guys. <laughs> We're going to start separating them out a little bit. Even if it's just like two, even if it's just like a light heavyweight and a heavyweight. Let's see, manages a counter jab, can't find a home. Let's see what he's got. Hell, if Cooper manages this one, maybe it's not the, the end of the world here. Cooper came out just ahead of Heath Herring. This might this might not be the worst thing in the world. Herring shooting for a takedown. He got it. Let's see if he can uh, if he can out wrestle him now. Make this happen. Pounds away. Here he goes. Force him to roll to the side. Rear naked choke. Not able to make it happen. Oh, we just saw this not too long ago. Herring once again more big strikes and that is it. Ends up with the ground and pound on Ray Cooper and the Texas Crazy Horse Heath Herring taking the win in this. Moves up to 3-0 and oh for Heath Herring. It was a tough fight. Shows some respect to Ray Cooper after thanking uh, friends, family, and everybody else. Uh, there you go. Heath Herring still undefeated. And uh, this should be an interesting uh, fight here. Co-main event for Revolution 3, Laverne Clark representing Iowa versus Bruce the Spaceman Baker. We'll see what happens here. Now, it seems like Laverne Clark, interestingly enough, is a slight underdog here. Baker already cut, though. So this might not do the, the best for him. He might have to start taking it to the ground and use that jujitsu training. Didn't even train with a team. Laverne Clark, though. See what he's got. Punch from Clark failing to land. A lot of strike exchanges happening here. Clark may be able to take this one. Baker seems to already be gassed. Mm. Final minute of the round. It seems like Clark is just uh Clark is just taking over this fight pretty quickly. And it looks like that's how we're going to... It looks like that's probably how we'll end this. Yeah. There you go. Round one. It seems like a clear 10-9 for Laverne Clark. Here we go. Hometown boy in the co-main event. He main evented and won his uh, first fight with Revolution. And uh, Revolution 2. See if he can make it happen again. Oh, my God. It's just him. It's just him striking him. Baker doesn't seem to be doing hardly anything right now. Baker, oh, just starting to gas. Clark, we're just starting to gas. But uh, yeah, Clark is uh, Clark is just <laughs> oh, Baker with the takedown. There you go. That is about as big as he wants to. Oh, tries to snare an arm. He got it. Laverne Clark, Baker tag. Baker it looks like Baker took him down, but Clark ends up getting the arm bar. <laughs> Yeah, Clark couldn't stop the takedown. Bruce Baker, the one who took it to the ground to use his jujitsu. But uh, Baker keeps extremely tight, peppers him with short punches, and Clark uses that as an as leverage for an arm bar. And Bruce Baker taking it to the ground. Laverne Clark finishing on the ground to take the win in the co main event. Praises his team at Next Generation MMA, and the fans, he praises Baker for a tough fight. Here is our main event of the evening. Dangerous Dan Henderson in his first fight with at uh, Evolution Fighting Championship versus a man who will be leaving. Uh, he's 1-0, his only win so far. Uh, it, it came against uh, Bruce Baker, of course, in uh, Evolution, and he main events tonight. In his final fight at Revolu uh, at uh, Revolution, uh, before he goes on to the UFC, Dan Henderson, two and zero. None of them official in here, but uh, we'll see how this works. Dan Henderson versus Tito Ortiz. Let's get going. I can I can only imagine. Oh my God, Henderson. Uh, Ortiz pounds away on him. Let's see if he can try to do something. No. Ortiz trying to pull him in close. Not, any, not anything happening here. Let's see. Ortiz immediately taking him down, pulling, getting him away. Oh, my God. 
It's just a lot of ground and pound, it seems, by Ortiz. All right, there you go. Well, Ortiz just took it right to Dan Henderson there. And here we go. Nope, nope. Henderson able to block it this time. Jesus. And no, oh, still not able to make it happen here. See what he's got going here. Henderson trying to run, trying to work with Ortiz here, and that's going to be it. it thank, yeah, Ortiz definitely took that round. Let's see if Dan Henderson can do it. A lot of grappling coming up here. Henderson, got he's definitely got to be more aggressive here. So let's see what he's got. Backed up against the ropes. Ortiz already, uh, already doing a lot to Dan Henderson here. He might be able to at least take this by, uh, by a decision. Let's see here. Less than a minute left in the round. He's got to do something. Henderson's got to make something happen here. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I think Ortiz is uh, probably going to make this happen. He was a bit of an underdog here, but uh, yeah, Ortiz up 2018. Let's see what happens. Oh, they're going round three. Oh, yeah, that's right. It is the main event, so we got four rounds. That's right, so Dan Henderson's going to have to go a couple more rounds here, but uh, it might not last that long. It seems like Ortiz has been super aggressive right now, making sure that Henderson can't do anything. <laughs> Jesus tries to maintain control. Let's see Henderson keeping him keeping him around. Oh my god, Ortiz might still have this. Let's see 10-9 favor of Henderson. All right, Ortiz up 29-28. He's going to Henderson's going to have to good, have to have a good showing here in this round. Takedown got the takedown by Ortiz. Oh my god. Come on, Henderson. Not able to make anything happen. I think he might just try to kill the clock here. Ortiz doing what he can here. Henderson's got to have to make something happen. Henderson's really got to make something happen here. We got less than a minute left. Ortiz may very well take this one three rounds to one. Looking for another takedown. Not able to make it happen. Drives him up against the ropes. Ortiz definitely having the better of him in that one. So this one, 39-37, got to be deciding here. All on 39-37, Tito Ortiz getting the win uh, over Dan Henderson. So his two fights, 2-0 two and o, as he moves on to UFC. Poor Dan Henderson had at least a decent, uh, it had a decent uh, betting line there. So you would have you would have done pretty well if you bet on Tito Ortiz for this fight. Uh, nonetheless, a lot of grappling there, uh, which did well for Ortiz. And uh, thanks. Uh, this is about the this is about the most respectful we'll probably see here. Thanks to sponsors and gives a show of respect to Dan Henderson. Now he's gonna go be Tito Ortiz that we all know. <laughs> Critical rating sixty nine, which means uh, we did do we did do good. That's uh, that's a positive. And the commercial rating got up past a thirty. So we should be able to uh, do a little bit of something here. A little bit of movement. There you go, 0.4%. It's not much, but it's something. And uh, they got Laverne Clark for a submission of the night. I think that was, yeah, there was the leg lock here by Carlos Newton. Oh, my God. You got to make me choose. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Let's give it to Holm for for uh, for his final fight as he as he sets off to retire. I wonder if he can. I wonder if he can do some. Uh, I wonder if he could do some play-by-play -play calling <laughs> after this. Who knows what? Who who knows what he could potentially do after that? Heath Heron getting knocked out of the night. I think it was okay. So we had two of them, but yeah, Heath Heron getting that one. Uh, I think. Yeah, we'll give it to we'll give it to Clark because it was definitely. An interesting way he had it, and Carlos Newton, you know, worked a little bit harder to make it happen. But yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll be good that way. We made five grand this time, yay! It finally worked out. Getting someone like Dan Henderson seemed to help too, even though he cost a little bit more. He brought in just enough uh, star power to bring bring it up. And uh, Tito Ortiz, the newest member of the UFC roster. Just after beating Dan Henderson. 
I remember Rainy Martinez. Uh, well, he's moving on, I guess, from UFC, maybe, or he moved on. Oh, he'll be moving on from his fight team. Gotcha. Well, there you go. Ludwig Borger retiring. Retiring on top with a win. And Tito Ortiz has left. So does that mean he, uh, he he's not on the roster? Yep, he is gone, gone. All right, there you go. We just lost a couple more guys. We're still negative two thousand in the hole, but we're we're doing we're doing okay. You know, we brought in a little bit more uh, uh, gate. It looks like this time, An extra seventeen hundred. I didn't see how many people showed up. I probably should have looked at that, but nonetheless, did okay. I probably could have done uh, a little bit less of the uh, marketing. I don't know if it would have affected the gate revenue that much, but uh, yeah, it probably would have. I don't know. It probably would have been a bit of a wash. Either way, I mean, we're still going to come out at least a little bit ahead after that. So I guess I will call it good there for now because it's almost an hour and a half. Jesus Christ. It's like 715 in the morning. I got to go to bed and uh, it's been it's been fun uh, hanging out with y'all. And uh, I appreciate you guys uh, coming out. Appreciate you guys uh, uh, being here. And uh, I'll figure out uh, the whole logistics of uh, what my next event is going to be after this. But hey, we got ourselves a couple of events in the books there. And uh, we're, we're doing better and better. 36, oh yeah, 35 to 69 to 96. So we're doing, we're doing better. We're doing better. We're doing okay. So, uh, nonetheless, uh, hopefully we'll keep on moving up and maybe get ourselves out of, uh, where we're at right now. Cause <laughs> it'd be nice, but, uh, either way, thank you guys. I appreciate it. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much for continuing to watch. It was, it was your guys' constant, uh, desire to see this, that, that made this happen. And I'm having a lot of fun just kind of building a company from the ground up. And uh, it's been it's been doing pretty well. So thank you. And I will see you next time.